So here's a change in pace. Now we're on unit three, which is all about trig. In grade 12, trigonometry is broken down into two different chapters. In this textbook, it's going to be chapter four, which deals with trigonometry, and then chapter five, which is about trig graphs. So trigonometry, when I say chapter four is about trigonometry, I mean things like we're going to be dealing with special triangles, um, trig proofs like identities, those were a lot of fun. The difference between grade 11 and grade 12 is that in grade 11, whenever we wrote an angle, we talked about an angle in degrees. This is a specific unit of measurement for angles. In grade 12, advanced functions, we don't deal with degrees anymore. We convert everything to a different angle measurement called the radian. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to teach you more about radians. I'm going to teach you also how to change back and forth between degrees and radians. Let's start off with the warm up. A full revolution is 360 degrees. If I want to draw some sort of an angle measurement, I do so on a quadrant chart. So I'd start off in standard position, and if it was a positive angle measurement, I'm going to go counterclockwise and open up in this direction. Then I'm going to draw my terminal arm. So if I wanted to go all the way around and end up in the same place, you would have that 60 degrees, but then you would add that full revolution, making it 420 degrees for your theta. Now this last question, converting between kilograms and grams, really has nothing to do with trig at all. Um, but the conversion and the way that it's set up is actually very similar to converting between degrees and radians. So you want to make sure that this weird number that they gave you, this random number that they want you to convert, is in one fraction, and you're going to multiply it by the actual conversion. So one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. And we set it up so that the thousand is on top and the one is on the bottom, because I want to make sure this kilogram cancels out with this kilogram, and it leaves me with the grams as my final unit, which is what I want. Okay, so you know what, why don't we start with what a radian actually is. So here's a radian. It actually is part of a circle. Okay, so if I have, let's say, a radius of a circle, and then I draw another radius of a circle, and I open them up, some sort of an angle is in between. It can be measured in degrees or in radians. Also, when I open up this part right here, this length gets longer. And this is called the arc length, and it's denoted by A. So an arc length is just part of the circumference of a circle. Now, if I put all those three things together, I get a formula. The angle inside, in terms of radians, is the arc length divided by the radius. So for instance, the arc length could be, I don't know, five centimeters. The radius could be two centimeters. And then this would be in radians, whatever five divided by two is. Okay, so let's check out some examples. What if the arc length was actually the same as your radius? So what if this was five centimeters and this was five centimeters? What kind of an angle would we get in between? Well, if they're both equal to each other, I'm just gonna take that formula that we had before and replace A with an R instead because they're equivalent. Then I'm gonna reduce, so R divided by R is one. That means that in the case that if this is five centimeters and this is five centimeters, then we're gonna get one radian in between the two radiuses. I want you to note that one radian is actually not at all the same as one degrees. One radian is this gigantic chunk of the circle, whereas one degrees is like a little teeny weeny sliver of an angle. Okay, so let's look at some more examples. Here's another circle. Now you know that half of a circle is 180 degrees. But what is that in radians? One whole circle would be the circumference, right? Well, that's 2 pi r. So that means that if I only want half of the circle as my arc length, I'm going to take 2 pi r and divide it by 2. These 2's will cancel out, and I'll just be left with pi r. Well, if that's my arc length, why don't we put that into our formula where the a is? Pi r is going to be divided by my r, and when I break that down, I'm going to be left with just pi. So in other words, 180 degrees is equivalent in radians to just pi. 
okay, so if pi is one half of a circle, shouldn't two pi's be an entire circle? Hmm, that does seem to be the case. So let's check that out in a little bit more of a slow motion. We know that an entire circle is 360 degrees. So the entire arc length should be the circumference, 2 pi r. That's why I wrote it right here. The arc length is 2 pi r, and I'm going to put that right into the formula right here. When we break down the r's, huh, we do get 2 pi. So now we know that 360 degrees in radians is equivalent to 2 pi's. Okay, so now that we know what a radian is, what's a quick way to convert back in between degrees and radians? Well, if you want to go from degrees to radians, here is a conversion, something with pi's and something with degrees. Notice that it's not exactly the same, it's just a flip if you're going to go from radians to degrees. Let's look at some examples. So what I want to do is I want to change these from degrees, I can tell that it's a degrees because of the degrees symbol, to a pi, which is a radian measurement, or it could also be an approximate radian measurement, which means a degree, or sorry, a decimal. Okay, so if I want to change this, what I'm going to do is write this number in a fraction, kind of like that 4.2 kilograms. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by the conversion. Now I need to write this one because I want to go from degrees to radians. So let's take a look again. Degrees to radians means I got to multiply pi over 180 degrees. There we go right here. Okay, so that makes sense because if I were to start to cancel things, shouldn't this degree cancel out with this degree? That means that there are no more degree symbols but there is a pi symbol. So I could also just break down my numbers a little bit further. 60 and 180 can both be divided by 60. That leaves 1 and 3. So 1 times pi is pi. 1 times 3 is 3. This would be what they call an exact answer for our radian measure. Now if they want this in approximate, what you'd have to do is you'd have to take pi which is 3.1415, I'm sure you have a some sort of a button on your calculator for that, and just divide it by 3 and you're going to get approximately 1.05. So that's going to be our approximate number in the nearest hundredth. So you can do the same thing over here, multiply your random number by the conversion, your degrees are going to cancel out, and then you'd probably want to break things down. So it looks like these guys can both be divided by 10 and you'll be left with 11 and 18. So 11 pi over 18 is one way to write your radians or if you want it in more approximate answer you can actually take 11 times pi divided by 12, or sorry, 18 and you get something like this. Okay so how do you convert from radians to degrees then? Well a radians you'll recognize has a pi in it or it's going to be an approximation, like a decimal. And sometimes they write radians beside it. So we're going to use the other conversion, the one specifically for radians to degrees. So that's 180 over pi. And we're going to do the same thing. Notice that the pi's cancel out, and then we're left with the degrees. That's going to be in our answer. If we can break down any further, we will. So 4 can be divided by 4 and 180 can be divided by 4. So I'm left with 5 and a 1 on the bottom, a 45 and a 1 on the bottom. So when we multiplied everything, we convert this guy in radians into what it would be in degrees. Okay, so it's the same thing over here, except this one actually doesn't have a pi right here beside it because it was in the decimal approximation form, and that's okay. So what happens is when we multiply, we can't really cancel anything out, so we just multiply it right away. 2.2 .2 times 180 is 396 degrees over pi. And we're just going to take the actual value of pi and divide it. So 396 divided by 3.1415 is equal to approximately 126. And notice that the degree symbol is still there. Okay, so this is going to be the first part of 4.1, and what I want to teach you in the next uh, video is about 
angular velocity, and then also a little bit more about arc length.